Spelljammer Academy Trial by Fire Introduction This adventure, designed for 3 to 7 second level characters, is the second in a series of four adventures. It is set in the Spelljammer Academy on the island of Nimbrel, many miles off the southwest coast of the Chultan Peninsula in the Forgotten Realm setting. Background Tensions are running high at the Spelljammer Academy on the island of Nimbrel, thanks to a recent rash of thefts and an attack against the Academy's founder, Mert the Merciless. The Academy's instructors have made it clear that it's business as usual for the new cadets though. The characters will be put to the test as they participate in a competitive series of illusionary training exercises against another squad of cadets. The characters are trying to take charge of their own spell jamming ship, plying a magical simulation of wild space on a mission to seek out the wreckage of a ship lost in an asteroid cluster. Are they up to the challenge? Overview The adventure story takes approximately two hours to play and is spread over three parts. Part 1 Pre flight meal. While having breakfast and preparing for their imminent training exercise, the characters meet the other cadets and discuss the recent troubling events happening in the academy. Part 2 Test of Metal Under the supervision of spell jamming training officer Sayeth Abazine and the spell jammer corpse training officer Bosun Tato, the cadets begin a competitive training exercise. Taking on the challenge of crewing their own spell jamming ship will test their skills, bravery, and ability to function as a team. Part 3 Sabotage An agent of an unknown foe sabotages the simulation chamber where the training exercises take place, causing the equipment there to explode. The characters must help tend to the wounded and might be instrumental in discovering a clue to the identity of the saboteur. During parts 2 and 3 of the adventure, the character's actions determine their score, and thus their success or failure in the training exercise. Adventure Hooks Trial by Fire follows the events of Orientation, the first adventure in the series. Characters who did not participate in the first adventure are assumed to have completed their orientation and are assigned to join the other character's training team. Part 1 Pre-Flight Meal the adventure begins with the characters gathered in the Academy's refectory to eat breakfast with other cadets and discuss recent events at the Academy. Fellowship To begin the adventure, describe the following. Today's the day, the official start of your Academy training. Fresh from orientation, you and your crewmates are to report to Sayeth Abazine, the spell jamming training officer. Before you head out though, your first stop is the Academy Refectory for a hearty breakfast. Found on the Cadet Quarters level, the Refectory is a large communal dining hall with a patio. The room is well lit by a dozen blue glowing orbs attached by bronze coloured rods to the ceiling. An L-shaped counter to the northwest is covered with small tools, contraptions and alchemical tubes and containers. Behind the counter, a door bears a sign that reads, Staff Only. Breakfast of Champions When the characters arrive, a stocky jiff named Petty Officer, Winston Ryback, is behind the counter doing what he does best, preparing meals for the Academy's hungry cadets. When the characters arrive, the refectory holds a dozen other cadets, a mixture of acolyte, apprentice wizard and bandits, all lined up before the counter or seated at tables. Each character who joins the line receives a bowl containing a smoky concoction of deep fried meat or beans, the character's choice, held together with sticky starches. Though the galley cook has never given this signature dish a name, most cadets have resorted to calling it gunpowder chowder. In addition to the characters, another group of cadets are receiving their first training assignment today. There's talk that the training officers might combine two groups to create a competitive training exercise on the Academy's simulation deck. The simulations deck is a magical marvel equipped with three simulation chambers that magically create the experience of traveling and fighting in wild space. 
Spelljammer Academy has been plagued by a rash of recent thefts, many of them targeting instructors. The thieves have yet to be identified or caught. In addition to realm space charts going missing, one of the thieves saw Ryback's quarters robbed of a custom pistol. The GIF loudly voices his frustration around that event, if any characters talk about the thefts within earshot of him. More troubling than the thefts is the recent attack on the Academy's founder, Mert the Merciless, which the characters thwarted in the previous adventure. Other cadets suspect the character's involvement, but don't know the details. Petty Officer Winston Ryback Jif Galley Cook Petty Officer Ryback is a muscular Jif in charge of the food served at the Academy, and on rare occasion he crews a ship. Like anyone else who runs a respectable galley, he's a staunch believer in the four basic food groups, beans, bacon, whiskey and lard. He's raucous and brash and gives bear hugs so good you think you might break a rib, but in a good way. His grey skin is usually coated with a light sheen of sweat. Kitchens are hot. The best way to someone's heart is through their stomach. Meeting Micken By the time the characters have picked up their meals, the only table with enough space for all of them is occupied by a cadet named Micken Habitstance. Though his head is buried deep in a book, he notices the characters and invites them to sit if they don't do so themselves. If the characters strike up a conversation with Micken, he expresses anxiety about the upcoming training exercises, having already convinced himself that he doesn't have what it takes to be a recruit. But he's even more afraid of letting down his fellow crewmates. He has been avoiding them to help keep his focus. Micken's worst enemy is his own fear. The characters can boost his confidence and lift his spirits in one of the following ways which might affect their crew's final score at the end of the adventure. Words of encouragement. A character offering Micken advice to boost his confidence can make a DC-12 charisma persuasion check. If successful, his spirits are lifted and you can jump to part two of the adventure. Problem solving. A character asking Micken about his studies kicks off a conversation about spell jamming, taking his mind off his troubles. If that character succeeds on a DC-12 Intelligence Arcana check, Micken's spirits are lifted, and you can jump to part 2 of the adventure. Feeling the Vibe A character who speaks to Micken's crewmates can encourage them to reveal their own insecurities regarding the upcoming training exercises to put Micken's mind at ease. A successful DC-12 Charisma Persuasion check persuades the cadets to call Micken over to their table, bolstering his spirits and you can jump to part two of the adventure. Micken Havistance, Human Cadet. Micken constantly worries about whether he has the right skills to graduate from the academy. When his nose isn't buried in a technical manual, he's scribbling mathematical and arcane equations in his battered pocket notebook that he always keeps on him. Micken has light olive skin, dark brown eyes, and short disheveled black hair framing a round face. He wears the same uniform as the other cadets. I'd like to be a great spell jammer, but I, I don't know if I've got it in me. Part 2. Test of Metal After breakfast, the characters travel to the main hall of the Spell Jammer Academy's simulation deck, where they're briefed on the upcoming training exercise before they're led onto one of the adjoining simulation chambers. The exercise will take them on a virtual journey through wild space and pit them in a race against the clock, as they must outperform a competing band of cadets facing their own simulation. Awaiting the characters in the main hall are two officers, Sayerth Abzin, the Spelljammer training officer, and Botswan Tato, a Hadazi, the Spelljammer corpse training officer. Characters who played through the first Spelljamming Academy adventure met both officers. Mission Briefing the characters arrive with another squad of six cadets, including Mick and Havenstance. Describe the following. You arrive at the simulation deck at the same time as the other team of cadets. All of you gather in the main hall, where today's training officers, Sayeth Abzin and Boswan Tato, stand waiting. A few members of the other squad murmur excitedly, but a glare from Bosun Tartur as she chews her cigarette quiets them. 
Sayeth Abazin scans the congregation with silver eyes. Their stern gaze shifts into a wide grin. Well, this is going to be fun. Tato steps forward to welcome the cadets and provide the details of the upcoming training exercise. In addition to testing each cadet's skills and talents, the exercise is also a friendly competition between the two teams of cadets, with each squad earning points that are tracked and recorded by observing officers. Assigning Roles Sayeth explains that each team of cadets must assign crew roles to its members. This training exercise has two optional roles, captain and shipmate, and one mandatory role, spelljammer. A team can have multiple shipmates, but only one captain and only one spelljammer. Try to limit the player's discussion of role assignments to a maximum of 10 minutes. Use the recommendations mentioned further ahead in the Know Your Role sidebar. The roles for the training exercise are as follows. Captain, optional. A team member who assumes this role is expected to give orders to other crew members, who, in turn, are expected to follow those orders. Shipmate, optional. A team member in this role operates the ship's rigging and shipboard weapons. The ship's captain can switch to this role as necessary. Spelljammer, mandatory. A team member in this role pilots the training ship using its spell jamming helm. One must be a spellcaster to fill this role. Know your role. When choosing role assignments, keeping the following in mind can help characters form an effective spell jamming crew. Using a spell jamming helm requires a keen mind, focus, and magical talent. A character with the ability to cast spells is essential for the spell jammer role. A crew relies on their captain to be intuitive, sensible, fair-minded, and decisive, making the captain role a good fit for someone with a high wisdom or charisma score. The Assignment After the roles are assigned, Sayerth provides the characters with the main objectives of the exercise. Bosun Tato surveys the assembled crews. Each crew is to navigate their ship through a debris field on the outskirts of Kolar a sodding big gas giant. There you to salvage the captain's logbook from the wreckage of an abandoned ship, then return to your starting point with your own ship intact. Tato levels a steely eye and says with a glare, Intact, not first. Get the mission done well, not quick. If the characters were friendly with Mikan in part one, he wishes them good luck. Both teams then head towards the simulation chambers, where their training would take place. Simulation Chambers Each simulation chamber is a broad circular shape with a dome ceiling. Its stone walls carved with arcane runes that fill the area with bright light. Each chamber is equipped with training versions of a spell jamming helm and creates complex illusions designed to test cadet speed skill, and ability to work together in a crisis. Sayerth Abzin accompanies the characters to a simulation chamber where Mr. Blip, the Academy's autonome quartermaster, is preparing the physical aspects of the simulation. Mr. Blip hurries over when he sees the characters enter, his eyes shifting to a green color as he greets the cadets. The autonome introduces himself to any characters who didn't meet him in the previous Spelljammer Academy adventure. Mr. Blip's eyes shift to a bright blue as he hurries over to a table set with magical gear and a mysterious device unrecognizable to the characters, reporting that everything is ready to go. Starting the simulation, Mr. Blip hands the characters two pages of parchment, a wild space map that shows the route to their destination, and a crude sketch of the logbook they're supposed to retrieve. Sayerth then directs the characters to gather around the training helm atop the platform. Once the characters are in position, describe the following. Sayerth steps back from the platform, holds their palms outwards, and begins an incantation. The sigils scrawled along the walls and floors glow brightly, intensifying as the training officer weaves their powerful illusion. Good luck, cadets, Sayerth says, and don't be afraid. Though these illusions are realistic, thanks to my arcane prowess, they are just that, illusions. 
Blue-white lines form around you, etching the shape of a ship deck around the platform upon which you stand. The room then melts away amid an explosion of color, textures and sounds that place you on the deck of a ship that is shaped like a gigantic hammerhead shark. The ship is situated in the sky dock atop Spelljammer Academy. Scudding clouds fill the sky above you. Simulator Rules Each simulation chamber channels powerful illusion magic that adheres to the following rules. Just like the real thing. The simulation around the characters affects all their senses. Everything looks, feels and sounds real with the illusion able to create the sense that the characters are in areas whose dimensions are larger than the room. Everything that happens within the illusion should be treated as if the characters are truly where they appear to be. Illusory Wards Characters can't sense that they are in an illusion, nor can the illusion be dispelled. The Detect Magic and Dispel Magic spells don't register or disrupt the magic of the illusion nor of the creatures or objects it creates. Damage. Any character who's reduced to zero hit points by the simulation falls unconscious but isn't dying. The character remains unconscious until the simulation ends, at which point the character awakens and gains one level of exhaustion from lingering psychic shock. Restored resources. When the simulation ends, Characters regain all their lost hit points, spell slots, and limited use powers. Taking off. Once the illusion begins, the crew must take off and ascend into wild space. This requires the characters in the Spelljammer role to succeed on a DC 13 ability check using their spellcasting ability. If the check succeeds, the character uses the spelljamming helm to propel the ship skyward if the character succeeds on the check on the first try, it counts towards the group's score in the training exercise. A second attempt at the check succeeds automatically. The island of Nimbral disappears quickly beneath your ship, which passes through the clouds until the spectacular void of wild space comes into view. Journey through wild space. During their simulated journey, the characters must overcome challenges described below. A challenge is resolved by having each character make an ability check. If half or more of the characters succeed on the check, the challenge is overcome. Otherwise, the characters fail their initial attempt, and their score is impacted. But any follow-up attempt succeeds automatically, allowing the training exercise and the journey to continue. Challenge 1. Plotting a Course the characters must use their wild space map to plot a course to their destination. Have each character make a DC-12 ability check. Each player chooses which check to make based on their character's role aboard the ship. The captain makes a wisdom survival or charisma persuasion check. A shipmate uses a strength athletics or a dexterity acrobatics check. And a spell jammer uses an intelligence investigation or wisdom survival check. Challenge 2. Electrical Storm The character's ship accelerates to spell jamming speed, racing through wild space towards its destination. After a minute or so in this simulated state, the ship returns to its normal flying speed. A school of giant space eels swim past the ship, and each eel discharges a bolt of lightning as it zips by. The ship is caught in the eel's electrical storm, which starts one or more fires on the deck. Avoiding the worst of the electrical storm and extinguishing the flames requires each character to make a DC-13 ability check. Each player chooses which check to make based on their character's role aboard the ship. A captain makes a wisdom survival or charisma persuasion check. A shipmate uses a strength athletics or a dexterity acrobatics check. A spell jammer uses an intelligence arcana or a wisdom survival check. Challenge 3 Asteroid Cluster Once the space eels are a safe distance away, the ship can resume its journey, traveling rapidly at a spell jamming speed. After another minute in this simulated state, the ship arrives at its destination, where the characters discover that the abandoned ship that they seek is located at the center of a cluster of asteroids. Reaching the ship safely means navigating a careful route through the asteroids. 
Have each character make a DC 13 ability check. Each player chooses which check to make based on their character's role aboard the ship. Captains make a Wisdom Survival or Charisma Persuasion check. Shipmates make a Strength Athletics or Dexterity Acrobatics check. Spelljammers make an Intelligence Arcana or a Wisdom Perception check. If the characters fail their initial attempts to avoid the asteroids, the ship is lightly damaged as it grazes an asteroid. This damage becomes relevant later. Salvage Operation Once their ship passes through the asteroid cluster, the characters reach the wreckage of a flying fish ship, torn apart by the celestial debris. The longer the characters take to locate and claim the captain's logbook, the more difficult the task becomes. Initiative rolls aren't necessary, but track how many rounds of ability checks it takes for the characters to spot the derelict ship's logbook. Spotting the logbook. The wreckage is surrounded by a cloud of silvery dust particles that reduce visibility. After pulling alongside the wreck, characters searching for the logbook must make a DC-16 wisdom perception check, spotting it if successful. The logbook lays amid debris from the captain's cabin, all of which bobs in the derelict's gravity plane. The characters repeat this check each round until the logbook is spotted. Retrieving the logbook. The next more difficult task is obtaining the book. While the debris rests in the ship's gravity plane, it's not exactly solid ground, and disturbing it could make finding the log difficult. This is a great opportunity for the player's ingenuity and creativity to shine. Let them come up with their own way of solving the problem, whether it's using Mage Hand, tying a rope around a character's waist and leaping towards the logbook, or other similar efforts. Assign a DC-13 check using an ability and skill that you deem appropriate. If successful, they are able to retrieve the logbook. Leaving the Asteroid Cluster Once the logbook is safely on board, the characters can exit the Asteroid Cluster. Once again, the characters must avoid the Asteroid by repeating Challenge 3 from the Journey Through Wild Space section. If the ship was lightly damaged by an asteroid earlier and grazes another asteroid on its way out of the cluster, the ship becomes heavily damaged instead. Wild Space Battle As your ship steers clear of the asteroids, another ship appears. Its sleek frame is painted in a wild shade of pink and is designed to resemble an immense squid. Starlight reflects off the ship's hull illuminating two turret-mounted ballistas rotating slowly to face your ship. The attacking ship is an old but reliable squid ship, crewed by Githyanki pirates. Having already set their sights on salvaging the derelict, the Githyanki don't take kindly to the characters jump on their claim. The Githyanki ship immediately moves in to attack position, forcing the characters into battle. Hammerhead Ship the following statistics are for the character's training ship and appear in handout number 1. The ship is equipped with one ballista and two mangonels, each on a rotating mount. The front of the ship also acts as a devastating ram. Provide the players with that handout for easy reference. Hit points. If the ship was lightly damaged in the journey through wild space section, it has 300 hit points instead. If the ship was heavily damaged in the salvage operation section, it has 220 hit points instead. Handout 1. Hammerhead Ship Hammerhead ships are a popular craft, especially among pirates and merchants carrying heavy cargo. They can float on water and sail across it, but they aren't built to land on the ground. Their keels would cause them to tip to one side. Standard weapons on a hammerhead ship include fore and aft mangonels, a ballista, and a reinforced bow for ramming. Squid Ship The following statistics are for the attacking Githyanki pirate ship. The ship is equipped with two ballista and a mangonel, each on a rotating mount. The tentacles at the ship's bow also act as a piercing ram. Squid Ship Among the oldest types of spell jamming vessels, Squid ships are popular with privateers and are often used as patrol ships. Standard weapons on a squid ship include a forward-mounted mangonel, two aft-mounted ballistae, and a reinforced bow for ramming. 
The tentacles that extend from the bow account for nearly half the ship keel's length. Squid ships can float and sail on water, and can land on ground. Using roles in combat. During each round of combat, a ship has its own turn and the members of its crew resolve its actions. Actions available to each crew member are dependent on their assigned roles. Running the encounter. Use the following guidance for running and resolving the encounter between the character's hammerhead and the Githyanki ship. The battle begins. Using the side initiative variant rule of chapter 9 of the Dungeon Master's Guide, the players roll a d20 for their initiative as a group, and you roll a d20 for the Githyanki aboard the enemy ship. Neither roll takes any modifiers. Dungeon Master's Guide Initiative Variant Side Initiative Recording initiative for each player character in Monster, arranging everyone in the correct order, and remembering where you are in the list can bog a game down. If you want quicker combats, at the risk of these combats becoming unbalanced, try using the side initiative rule. Under this variant, the players roll a d20 for their initiative as a group, or a side. You also roll a d20. Neither rolls receive any modifiers. Whoever rolls highest wins initiative. In the case of a tie, keep re-rolling until the tie is broken. When it's a side's turn, the members of that side can act in any order they choose. Once everyone on the side has taken a turn, the other side goes. A round ends when both sides have completed their turns. If more than two sides take part in a battle, each side rolls for initiative. Sides act from the highest roll to lowest. Combat continues in the initiative order until the battle is complete. This variant encourages teamwork and makes your life as a dungeon master easier, since you can more easily coordinate monsters. On the downside, the side that wins initiative can gang up on enemies and take them out before they have a chance to act. The Githyanki ship is 50 feet away from the Hammerhead ship and maintains its distance throughout this encounter, attempting to disable the character's ship before the Githyanki attempt to board it. While the Hammerhead ship is faster than the Githyanki ship, the characters will still be in range of its weapons if they choose to flee. Evil Shadows Two Shadows, former crew members of the Flying Fish ship that lies strewn amid the asteroids, are attracted to the battle as it unfolds. At the start of the fourth round of combat, they appear at the stern of the character's ship and attack the nearest creatures. Roll a d20 for the Shadows initiative, again with no modifier. Alternative Scenarios Some characters might want to resort to options other than direct ship-to-ship -ship combat when the Githyanki ship attacks. With a few examples discussed below, use your best judgement when adjudicating these tactics and reward players for great ideas and quick thinking. Using Magic Certain spells can be used to damage an enemy ship or hamper its crew. A ship spell jamming helm or pilot often can't be targeted without being aboard the enemy ship. Boarding The characters can board the ship instead of fighting it at a distance. Any such attempt requires the pilot to move the character's ship within 5 feet of the enemy ship. Once one or more characters board the Githyanki ship, that ship makes only one ballista attack each round. The rest of the crew, 6 Githyanki pirates using the bandit stat block, but which are resistant to psychic damage, leave their stations to defend the ship, taking the characters on in combat. Ending the encounter The encounter ends when one of the following conditions is met. The enemy ship is reduced to 100 hit points or fewer, causing it to retreat. The enemy ship takes two critical hits, causing it to retreat. The character ship moves more than 100 feet away from the enemy ship, at which point the enemy ship breaks off its pursuit and flees. The character ship is reduced to zero hit points. If this occurs, the characters fail the training exercise, and the simulation ends. Help! Provided the characters don't lose their ship in the training exercise, they can make a return journey once their ship-to-ship -ship battle ends. Your ship slows, marking the unexpected presence of something else in the vicinity. It takes just a moment to spot another hammerhead ship in the distance. 
The other ship is severely damaged and adrift. Every few seconds, bands of electricity ripple out from the center of its hull, dealing further damage to the ship. If the characters approach the other Hammerhead ship, they spot the cadets from the other team on its deck. No check is needed to tell they're in trouble. Mikan is among them and waves for help. The characters can choose to leave the other team to their fate, with the goal of beating them to the finish line, or they can approach the other ship and evacuate its crew before that ship is destroyed. After the characters abandon or evacuate their fellow cadets, the simulation ends. Continue with part 3. Part 3. Sabotage The simulation chambers at the Spelljammer Academy have been sabotaged, causing Saith's illusion to erupt with a backlash of energy. This backlash causes the spelljamming helm aboard Mikan's simulated hammerhead ship to malfunction at the end of part 2. The characters won't learn the full story in this adventure, but the sabotage is related to the recent rash of thefts at the Academy and the attack on Mert. The saboteurs target the Academy's instructors, but the cadets are prone to getting caught in the crossfire. Shattering Illusions Describe the following. The illusion around you ends in a wave of silvery blue light, and you stand within the simulation chamber where your training exercise began. Magical energy ripples like a turbulent cloud around you, reaching out to touch the rune-scribed walls, then exploding outwards as bolts of lightning, sending Saith and Tato and others flying to the ground. Each character must make a DC-13 dexterity saving throw, taking 13 or 3d8 lightning damage on a failed save, or half as much on a successful one. Picking up the pieces Most of the magical backlash caused by the sabotage was directed at Saith and Tato, where the two were supervising the training exercises. Both are badly injured. In addition to tending to their own wounds, the characters can head to the other simulation chamber, where Mikan's group of cadets was being tested. If the characters spoke with and encouraged Mikan in part 1, or if they inspired Mikan's fellow cadets to open up to them, they discover that Mikan's actions saved his fellow teammates from the worst of the magical backlash. If the characters were unsuccessful in their overtures, or made no effort to interact with Mikan or his fellow cadets, two of those cadets are critically wounded. Unless they receive magical healing, they die in three rounds. Alternatively, a character who succeeds on a DC-13 Wisdom Medicine check is able to stabilize them, providing they do so within three rounds. Finding Clues Characters can help the training officers examine the simulation chambers for signs of sabotage. A character who succeeds on a DC-12 Intelligence Investigation or Wisdom Perception check notices an odd-shaped metallic plate crudely jammed into the walls of one of the chambers. A search of the other chamber reveals an identical object, with each bearing a jagged sigil carved into it. A detect magic spell reveals a powerful magic emanating from both objects. If the characters don't find either plate, Mr. Blip discovers one of them. Once Sayeth Abzin and Bosan Tato are informed, they examine the plates and deduce it to be the cause of the sabotage. In addition, examination of the sigil reveals something to the officers, which the other characters can overhear. Bosun Tato scowls, chomping down at her cigar. She points to the sigil as she looks at Saith Abazin. That look familiar to ye? Saith's quicksilver eyes scan the object coldly. Vokath, I should have suspected. It appears that the Mercane's grudge against Mert has become a vendetta. The old wolf must be told. If any characters ask about Vokath, both officers crisply inform them that their matter is none of their business. The characters will have a chance to learn more in the subsequent adventures. Ending the Adventure Although the training exercises were sabotaged, all the cadets completed enough of the session to receive their scores. The character earns points in the training exercise, as outlined with the scoring sheet. If the characters earn 6 points or more, they successfully complete the exercise. For winning the completion against the other squad, each character is awarded 100 gold pieces. If the character earn fewer than 6 points, they fail the training exercise. 
Bosun Tato commends them for their efforts regardless, especially if they stop to help the other squad even in their failed effort, and tells them they'll have a chance to repeat the exercise. Unknown to the characters though, the urgent mission presented in the next adventure will take priority. Character Advancement The characters advance to third level upon completing this adventure. 